Well, good morning, friends and neighbors. Uh, welcome to the Rosa String Works workshop. Got another little project here, uh, not too different than uh, the little banjo lin that we worked on before. This time we have a banjarine. Uh, it's uh, spelled B A N J E A U R I N E. It's an S S Stewart. Um, it's a well-made instrument, I would say from my guess, when I first saw it, my first guess was probably the 20s. Then as I looked at it a little longer, I said, this could be older than that. This could be very early 1900s, uh, you know, right around the turn of the century, or it could be very late 1800s. When I started looking them up online, a lot of them were 1890s. So my guess is pretty accurate. Um, it's... Uh, it's missing a lot of parts. I'm not going to shoot this whole video in terms of um, the whole restoration and everything that I'm going to do to this. Uh, obviously, we need a new head. <laughs> you can see straight through it. Um, so we're going to have to put a new head on here. We're going to polish it up, get rid of all the rust. It's been uh, left out in an outdoor shed for years, and so it's really rusted up bad. Uh, a lot of people say, oh, you want to keep that patina. Well, you don't want to keep rusty patina on an instrument. It just uh, it doesn't help anything. You want to make the instrument look like it's been uh, cared for, you know, uh, and it certainly doesn't look that way right now. Uh, it's going to need a fifth string peg. Uh, usually, I think one of the things that's unique about this is that it actually has a fifth string. Most of these really short little banjos are just four string banjos. Um, but uh, this one does have a fifth string and the problem with it is the hole is really whoops can't see it because of all the junk but the hole is really reamed out I think you can see it there and so we'll have to fill that hole and then redrill it and do it correctly a uh, lot of the inlay is missing up here as a matter of fact uh, all but uh, two pieces <laughs> let me rephrase that all but two pieces are missing up here so we'll have to make all that uh, there's a piece of veneer missing here. We'll try to blend that in and make that match. Um, you know, it's, uh, it is what it is. Some of the instruments out there are listed as very high dollars. So, uh, you know, uh, I don't know that this one would bring high dollar. Um, this one seems to be kind of the middle of the road model, uh, best, best that I can find out there. Uh, there are definitely ones out there that are much fancier than this, made by S.S. Stewart. Um, but this one seems to be about middle of the road. It's uh, well, very well made uh, in terms of construction and all that. Uh, but I'm just talking about decoration in terms of inlay and things like that. It's uh, kind of middle of the road on that one. It's got a very unique tailpiece. I thought surely there's parts of this tailpiece that are missing. And technically I'm right, there is a part missing. But uh, it's, uh, this is the complete tailpiece in terms of holding the strings. The part that's missing, and this will not show up on my bleached out uh, print that I printed, I, I doubt. Uh, but uh, that my printer was missing ink, so you can see the stripes and things here, so are low on ink. But you can see a rosette. It looks like maybe out of ivory uh, is what it looks to me like. is missing out of the top of this. So I'm going to try to put something back there that mimics that. Um, I may use um, wood and mother of pearl or something like that that will at least look similar. Um, it's not going to be exactly the same. I don't have ivory. I do have some bone though and maybe I can make it out of bone. And then I could, in that case I could make it very similar. Uh, that just thought just occurred to me as I was talking here. So maybe I could make it out of bone and make it look pretty similar. Um, anyway, bottom line is we're going to repair this whole thing. Uh, I've already got the parts ordered for it. And uh, we're going to make it look pretty good. And at really an unbelievably low price, I'm, I'm doing it uh, pretty inexpensively. I'm not going to, I don't think it's going to take me hours and hours to do this anyway. Uh, you know, two or three hours, I think I'll have it up in pretty darn good shape. Um, of course, I've been wrong before. <laughs> well, it didn't take very, just a few minutes to get it broken down a little bit further. I've got it down into its main piece parts now. I took the little tuning pegs out of it. So the neck and that piece are all pretty much one piece, although I do see a seam right here. I'm not really sure how they would have put it together. 
I would say it's doweled and glued uh, is what it looks like because uh, it does seem solid. I don't think it's going to unscrew or anything. There is a little bit of a bolt, a brass bolt on the back end here that goes through the uh, deal here to hook it onto the tailpiece. Uh, got the old uh, head off of it, <laughs> what there is left of it. Best I can tell, it's 11 inches and a half inch. So it's 11 by half uh, in terms of 11 diameter, uh, half inch deep. Um, got the hoop off of it. Uh, the only other thing you can see a little bit is you can see how shiny it is here around the out outer edge and how corroded it is there. Uh, the only other thing I'm going to do at this point uh, until I get to new parts is I'm going to take all of these off, all these studs here, so that I can buff this whole rim out really good and make the whole rim look a lot better. Um, and I'll buff out each individual part too. So it's going to, there's a lot of buffing here. Uh, the other thing I could do uh, before I get the uh, other parts in is I could recreate this inlay up here, and I may do that. Uh, but the parts are on order. They'll be here in a couple days. Okay, I thought I'd just give you one more real quick look before uh, I buff this out so you could see what it looks like with the uh, brackets all gone. All those little uh, attachment brackets are missing now, and you can see how they're shiny under there, too. Uh, but anyway, I thought you would like to see a before and after shot. So there's the before. Pretty seriously uh, corroded, actually. I, I don't know how well you can see how bad the corrosion is, but it's pretty bad. But I think we can do something with that. I think it's going to look pretty good when we're done. Well, about 10 minutes has elapsed since the last little clip. And we've got it buffed out about as good as we're going to get it for the budget that we have. Um, that is part of the problem here. We could make this thing look, of course, like brand new if, if you wanted to spend hundreds of dollars on it uh, extra. Um, as it is, we're going to be doing this whole thing for just a less than three hundred dollars so uh, you can't expect too much when you when you're trying to keep the budget really low um, but we do have uh, it buffed out um, it looks much 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 better um, there's lots of places that are very dull uh, where the chrome has basically worn through um, there's a couple places here where there's really no chrome left it's pretty much wore down to the base metal um, you know, but uh, it is what it is. Um, it's going to look much, much, much better than it did. I uh, hope it shows up in the video there. I'm trying to decide whether it's showing up or not. <laughs> but uh, the, the corrosion was really bad on it. So that's not too bad. The hoop, on the other hand, uh, is uh, it's pretty much gone. The chrome in terms of, you know, the chrome is pretty much gone on this. There's a few places where there's still some chrome. But I basically just took steel wool, cleaned it up as best I could, and then I used the, uh, the aluminum trick. I don't know if anybody's ever tried that, but you take aluminum and you rub it on chrome, and it does help it, uh, the looks of it. If you've got some uh, chrome like on your car that's a little bit cruddy looking, just take aluminum foil, rub on it. Um, it does clean it up, make it look pretty decent. So that's what I did on this. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Like I said, uh, for the budget that we've got to work with, it's, it sure looks a whole lot better than it did. Well, I thought I'd give you an update on this uh, Banjarine. I've got the uh, peg head back in order. I don't know if you uh, could see it in the first part of the video, but this whole piece of wood was missing in this area. I put a new piece of wood in there, blended it in. Uh, there was only two pieces of inlay that were in the headstock. This piece here and the center diamond up there were in the headstock. All the rest of the pieces are new. I've lightly sanded it to f make it flat. And uh, so that's turning out pretty good. It pretty much looks original as far as I can tell. Got <coughs> one more little, oh, excuse me. <coughs> one more tiny piece of inlay to put in here. Just a little kind of a diamond in that spot there. I've gone ahead and filled the hole for the five string, for the fifth string uh, peg, and we'll be re-milling that here before long and uh, fitting a new peg in there. That's about it for the moment. Thought I'd give you another update on another little piece of it. The pegs up at the peg head, I thought were so tarnished that they wouldn't turn back shiny. Here's a, a before. A little bit hard to see. It's not in focus. Let me get my hand up there to focus it. You can 
see and here's an after so much much nicer real shiny looking bright I haven't really wiped the powder off there the buffing compound still on there should have wiped that off I guess would have made a little bit better impact but anyway before and an after so you can see there's a uh, quite a difference there it's gonna make them look pretty darn good and keep it original which is really nice well we're back with the final on the banjarine I've showed you bits and pieces up to now and we've got her all together all cleaned up tuned up put back together try to give you an explanation of everything I've done I put in all of this inlay except for two pieces the pieces were this one here and this one here were the originals that diamond there and this one down here were original all the rest of those are new I took out all the pegs polished them up cleaned them up tightened them up got that all working nice I replaced a piece of wood right here that was missing on the peg head you can't really even tell that now at all so there was, that whole wing right there was missing on the black the uh, fretboard was loose I re-glued it all over wherever it needed it I had to make that little diamond right there and uh, inlay that to match the other one because it was missing of course I put on a new head new bridge uh, I buffed out all the deals we're still missing two uh, hooks here I just don't have any uh, that would match it unfortunately I did find one that matched semi actually it doesn't really match I didn't have the the part right here that matched so I just made something up but I found a hook at least so there's an extra hook there and uh, then I made this little button because that little flower button there I made that out of deer antler because uh, the original had that and I would never seen that before but I found a picture of the original so let me find that picture again you can see there's a picture of the original with the button on it and so I more or less made a button that looked pretty similar it's not exactly right but it's pretty close well and it uh, has a neat little sound but it's all tuned up ready to go so I'm sure the customer is going to be very happy with that and uh, of course as I mentioned earlier it was a pretty much bargain price on this uh, if you've got instruments out there you'd like restored just give me a give me a ring send me a private message uh, my website is www.rosastringworks.com you could also uh, make a comment on this video and I'll get your uh, information that way so uh, Anyway, if you'd like to get a hold of me for uh, work on an instrument, I'd sure be proud to do it. Please click the like button, and if you don't subscribe, please subscribe. Thank you.